Hey guys, I hope that you've been enjoying the, the lessons on Raynaud Transport Theorem. Now, when I went for a certain lecture, the, the, the person that was teaching really solved this good example of a hovercraft, which I'll explain later. But he didn't really use a very mathematical rigorous method, or at least uh, a method that showed the validity of Raynaud's Transport Theorem. And that is why I'm here, and I'm going to try to show it to you to the best of I can. The answer is the same, but it's really to know, you know, the individual aspects of Reynolds Transport Theorem, which I believe is good, so we can apply for whatever situation that may dawn upon you as, as engineers or as physicists. Okay, here is the problem that we have. We got a certain hovercraft, a, a hovercraft that is labeled as over here. Okay, basically the hovercraft is this thing like this there. And then there's a certain pump that will pump uh, the volume of air, which is given by rate of Q. That's why I put minus Q, uh, minus Q per second, as you can see, that goes inside here. And once the, the volume of air is sucked in and it shoots out, it would go like this, okay? And it's this volume of air that keeps the hovercraft um, stationary at the top. Yeah, like so, like this, okay? Now, we, are also, we have also been told that the distance from the ground to the hovercraft is given by D, which we can set as a certain value, and that as the air is sucked in and shoots out like that, there's a parabolic velocity profile, which is given by, that's why I drew it such a way. So what does that mean? It means that the velocity profile is not constant. Yeah, the, vol the velocity profile is not the same. In fact, in fact, it's, it's, in fact, can't even say it's, it's not constant. The velocity profile is not zero because as we go down, there's a change in the, in the velocity, as you can see over here, right? Now, there's a few restrictions where, as you can see, there's radius and there's a big R. So the big R is basically the, this, the width of the hovercraft. And as we move from the center axis, we have labeled that this is R. We should see why in a minute. But basically, it's just that the velocity of the air wouldn't be the same. It depends on R. On top of that, there's a few restrictions. And that is the water. Well, this is supposed to be the water, in case you didn't know. It has constant density. So, which obviously is a bit simplified because as we know, as the water shoots down, the density of the, the water will change. Or as the air shoots down, the density of the water will change. But for the sake of argument, let's label that as constant density and that the water is immobile. So, basically, we are not really dealing with the element of sharing stress, which we should, okay, which I will try to tackle that in the next question. So, um, our first part of the question is that we have the velocity function u, which is written in terms of r and y, which if you have to think about it, actually makes sense because of the parabolic profile, right, it depends on where we are. Okay, u, if I'm not wrong, is taken from the ground up. Okay, let me just check. Yeah, u, well, sorry, sorry, I'm saying u, y. Okay, so the velocity function is written in terms of r and y. So y is taken from the ground up. So as we as we change or as we are looking at a certain particle in the y direction, there's a change, there's a different velocity as well as r, the radius, because you know it could be told that maybe as the air goes down, the velocity here is much faster than when it's over here when it's about to exit the, the elevation of the hovercraft. Okay, and it's given in terms of a y a times y multiplied by d minus y, where y where a is written in terms of r. Okay, a is written in terms of r. So our first objective of the, the lesson of the problem is to find A, okay? Find A over here, which is to, in, so, in doing so, we can find the velocity function. Now, what the main purpose of this lesson is really not to solve the whole problem because it's quite a difficult problem, but it's to see the validity of Reynolds transport theorems, which I'll write it down now. Okay, the material derivative of the extensive property of the system, okay, is equal to the rate of change of the intent extensive property of the control volume, which we're given as the density, the intensive property, integrate that with the volume, sorry, yeah, with the with, in, with respect to the volume, and then we plus, okay, um, integrate the control surface of the density, and we're gonna put a velocity vector, the normal vector, and integrate that in terms of dA. Okay, this is the control surface like so where n is the normal vector to the plane of the control surface. So as we look at our analysis, basically it's, it's like that, okay, n is like that, which we, which we would have to use later on. Now, the reason why I want to tackle this from radial transport theorem, because really from this whole theorem here, we can really analyze the problem, which I think is quite interesting. Now, the, the system of particles, right? So right now, we, there seems to be a lot of stuff that, that you know, um, you, you don't know what's going on with all these quantities, which I'm here to dis demystify, okay? What we're gonna do is that we're just basically gonna pick ourselves a control volume, okay? And in doing so, we'll pick ourselves a control surface. However, that is not enough. We still need to find out the, con the system of particles because that's to make the whole theorem complete, okay? And on top of that, we need to know what the extensive property is. We need to define clearly, clearly what is the extensive property, which I believe is best that we do that one first, okay? So if we look at the problem, the problem is basically air moving in and moving out. 
Well, what could the excessive pro property, property be? Like, if we have a small thing about it, the uh, Sorry, okay. If we have a small thing about it, the extensive property would be the volume, right? Because the air, we are looking, we are concerning with the air that moves in and moves out, or the volume of air. That is our extensive property. So, if our extensive property is volume, what is our intensive property? Our intensive property is basically volume per mass, right? Right, volume per mass. And what is volume per mass given by? Volume of mass is given by 1 divided by density. I hope you can see that. Okay, let's have a think about it. We want this to be volume. So we've got M here, B here. We want this to be volume. We want B to be volume because our extensive property is volume, right? So um, if we take the mass and we divide that by the density, uh, we basically get the volume. That's why our small b is 1 over density. And in doing so, we can now rewrite the equation. Our first step is to rewrite the equation with the intensive property. So material derivative, extensive property, this one still stays the same, okay, equals to partial t, uh, partial partial t. Now we got the control volume, but now we got the density, but our b happens to be 1 divided by density, regardless of what density is, because as, as we know, throughout the control volume, density could change. But whatever that value of density is, we are going to divide that by itself. So changing v, uh, sorry, dv and class integrate control surface again density one divided by density and vector n dot vector v dot vector n and d a. Okay, so we are rewriting this taking into account the extensive property, which in this case is volume. Okay, so as you can see, this one now simply becomes change in t integrate dv uh, of the control volume and plus control surface vector v n. Okay. So far, so good. So now we have just reduced our equation to this one over here. That is step number one. Now step number two, what is our system of particles, right? And remember, what is our system of particles and how does the extensive property change with that system of particles? Because ultimately, that's what we're analyzing, the change of the extensive property of the system of particles. So what I will do is that I will first Let's just say that our system of particles is about going to be the air over here, okay? So the air has not moved inside yet over here, but the system of particles, which I shouldn't draw, is okay, basically this one over here. So that is our system of particles. Just pick any system of particles. What is our control volume? Our control volume is basically this thing over here. Right? This is the, the things that's interesting, you know, things that are interesting can be over here. So that's our control volume. So our system of particles is over here and our control volume is over here, right? And basically what is happening is that the system of particles is going to move inside the control volume and move out. As easy as that, it's going to move inside the control volume and move out. Right? I mean, that, that is, that's what's going to happen. So, if this is what is going to happen, what is the, the material derivative of the extensive property of our system of particles, okay? Knowing that the excessive property we're looking at is volume, well, it wouldn't take for you long to know that that is going to be the rate of change of volume of the system of particles. And that will just simply become zero. Does that, okay, does that make sense? Look, our system of particles over here, after a certain time, the system of particles will be over spread over here because it's going to move inside the hovercraft, right? But it's still, there's, there's not going to be a change in volume because nothing is done to that system of particles. It still remains as a system. So the change of the BS, which in this case is the change of the volume, is equal to zero. So what we can do is that we can eliminate that equation out of the way. Now, the second equation over here, partial, partial, um, partial T, control volume dV. Well, what is, what is going to be this one? We're going to integrate something with respect to volume, okay, and then we're going to take the rate of change of that or the partial T in terms of that. Well, that would just also simply give us zero. Why? Because we integrate that, we get the volume. Uh, take that with respect to time, we get the rate of change of volume. Let's look at that. What is the rate of change of the of the volume inside the control inside the, of the control volume? Okay. Well, basically, the rate of change is also zero because you see, as the air moves in over here, okay, and as the air moves out over here, and if it's done in a continuous process. There, there's going to be air that is going to stay inside that control volume. The, the air inside, or the volume of air inside the control volume does not change, right? Because that's how the hovercraft is going to work. So that's why we can reduce this to now 0 and 0. But well, this is equal to 0, 0. So basically, we cancel this out, cancel this out. And now, we are left with this one over here, this equation over here. And this is what I mean by using Reynolds Transport Theorem. We slowly write out the general form and we eliminate the equations based on what we know. In this case, we eliminated these two. So we are left with this equation, which is the integrate of 
the control surface, the velocity, and the uh, dot with the normal vector uh, with respect to the aim. Okay, and how we're going to tackle that, we're going to tackle that using this equation here to find the velocity function. Well, it's quite nice, it's quite nice really, because we got the velocity, velocity vector over here and we got the normal vector over here, and this velocity happens to be related to the velocity function, so that's quite good. Now, I'm going to rewrite that as, it's going to be, sorry, oh, uh, yeah, it's going to be this one, take away b in, okay. What does this mean? Okay, sorry, this one's equals to zero. So basically this one's equals to zero. Okay, what does this mean? I'm just basically rewriting that the control surface, okay, as the extensive property that's going out, subtract by the intensive property that's going in.